the scripture, it was interesting. I've been doing a battle for a couple of days on what to talk on. I know it is the time for zeal, but something else kept coming to me, and I kept saying, I don't know if this is the right scripture for Sunday. And then Tim <laughs> opened up with the song that fits the scripture. And the scripture is, do you not know that your body, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, which you have of God, you, and you are not your own. What did we sing this morning when we started? Hmm? My life, not my own. Hmm. For you have, let's see, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit because they belong to God. You know, we talk about people I've read in books, you know, God is the first principle. I got news for you. God is the only principle. <laughs> the only principle there is. And I was thinking about that so strongly about how, how we are experiencing. And when we read the Bible, we think, oh, and I used to hear people say this all the time. If I can only have lived during the time of the Bible. <laughs> Frankly, not I. The culture was different. <laughs> the way of thinking was different. Of course, the reason why they always think, it, you know, in the past is always better than now. Hmm? It's because people have closed minds. They don't realize that all you have is right now. That's all, that's it. That's the only thing you have is right now. In fact, I like what the Dalai Lama said about the mind. He said, the mind is like a parachute. It works best if it's open. <laughs> it works best if it's open. Hmm? And what happens is, within every human being, there is the seed of life, the seed of power that we call God. God is not a person. God is just a word we use to try and explain something that is so powerful and invisible that you can't see with the physical eyes, but within your being and in your body, your body knows it and can respond to it and your mind can respond to it. What cuts us off from it is our thoughts. The thoughts, the thoughts, because let me see, let me tell you something. When I think about the body, you know, people wanna, wanna separate God and human beings. That is a lie and that is a falsehood because human being and God are one the same. One and the same. You cannot divide them. When you say, oh, there is no God, well, then there are no human beings. Because we have God because of human beings. You with me? In other words, God bursts through human beings. What, where did we get the idea? Where did the word God come from? comes from a human being because we're the ones who talk and make up words, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you could use the Bible, you could use Hebrew, you can use Aramaic, but then they had all different kinds of words in different cultures at different times, but all the time, God has never stopped being with humankind, never. 
because the last book of the scriptures were written in Revelation that closed the book? No, God is always with humankind and has always been with humankind. And you have to look back over. If you look back over everywhere, it was God bursting through the man called Jesus. We call it the Christ, which simply means the anointing. A man was anointed, and his name happened to be, and it's not Jesus, that comes from Greek. It happens to be Ishua. Ishua. Hmm? Which means Yahweh saves. In other words, God is always with us. Hmm? What I'd like to re have a realization come is realize that there is never a separation, never a division between you and God. You may have a thought, but if you turn to this and drop the other thought, keep your mind open in a parachute so you can come down. Hmm? When you realize there is no division, I don't care what is happening to you, what is going on in you, what is happening there is no division or separation, ever, ever. It's only the silly things we tell ourselves. Well, if I lived in another situation, well, the situation that we're not seeing is the inner situation. That's a part of us. The cells in our body are tremendously intelligent. I'm going to say that again. The cells in your body, in my body, our bodies, the cells are intelligent. And they respond to your thinking. They respond to your thoughts. You think, well, I'm feeling this. No, you're not feeling this. There's a thought behind that feeling. Thought transmutes into feeling. And sometimes when you're feeling low, it's because you've got a low thought. And your cells are agreeing with you. <laughs> because the thought, not only can thought help us and guide us, but thought can also distort. It depends on the type of thought you are having. And the thought then transmutes into an emotion. It transmutes into an emotion. Sometimes I think, well, why am I feeling so negative? Of course, you never feel that. <laughs> Come on, you all look so innocent out there this morning. You never feel negative. Hmm? There, I finally got a smile. <laughs> It's because somehow, without you realizing it, you, you've had a thought you've been dwelling on without realizing it. Hmm? And all of a sudden, oh, I'm sad. You know, I, I don't know why I'm sad. And then we go on a hunt. <laughs> well, maybe it's so-and-so, you know, or... And you may be surprised how sometimes something a person may have said to you is lingering there and you didn't realize it. Hmm? And that lingering thought manifests into an emotion. I'll never forget when I was in uh, Chicago lecturing. This was the beginning, the, 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 when I first started out and no one knew me, no one knew my name, nothing. And I had to speak at a convention in Chicago at a hotel. It was called Spiritual Frontiers Fellowship. No one knew me at all. And I had a seminar and I was one of the keynote speakers. When everyone came to the seminar, I only had about 10 or 12 people. And there was about over 1,000 people there. But then I spoke the next evening, and I spoke on the mysteries of creation and what God is. Well, it brought the house down. I mean, people, when I opened up for the seminar the next day, they had to take down the walls 
in the little room I was in all the way through and I couldn't, when I had to speak, people were all around me, my feet and everywhere. I mean, I never had received so much accolades and stuff like that as I was overwhelmed by it. And that was it. From then on, I couldn't keep up with all the speaking engagements all over the world for years. Couldn't keep up with it. In fact, I knocked myself out one time, had to go to the hospital. Because <laughs> I just accepted everyone, except <laughs> and I paid the price. What I'm getting at is this. When I got home after all that wonderful time, feeling so good, I'll never forget, I sat down in my bedroom, sat on the bed, and my wife was in the powder room there, and she says, what's the matter with you? I said, what do you mean? She says, what's the matter? You look dejected. I was. And she said, what's going on? I said, I don't know. I just don't feel good. Not physically, emotionally. And I, I, I just don't feel good. And she says, well, what? Look, look what happened to you up in Chicago. Look at the, 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 you can't keep up with everything. Look at all the invitations and everything you get and all this stuff. She says, what's, what's the matter with you? I said, I don't know. I guess I'll always be mediocre. And she said, what? And she's talking to me. She said, what? Mediocre? Where, where did you hear that? When she said that to me, when she said, where did you hear that? Then, it, then I started thinking. And I thought, well, where did I hear that? Oh, I remembered. It was my father. My father. And he said to me, you'll always be mediocre. And so I guess I had accepted it and didn't realize it. Because here I was doing all this thing. And it, 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 you know, you're talk, I was a teenager when he said that to me. And here I am married, had children. And, and of course, I had also been pastoring in churches and doing this. And, all, and yet this came. Look how old it is. <laughs> I was in my late 20s early 30s, and that, that thought had lodged itself. Hmm? I hope you don't mind if I use myself as an illustration. I know you're not supposed to do that in public speaking, but I'm doing it. It had lodged itself. I didn't even know it was there. And it was, it was hibernating. And at the right time, after I've come off of this cloud, sat down and says, <laughs> I'll get you now. I'll get you now because you're feeling too happy. You're feeling too happy. You can never feel too happy. We have enough, enough misery in the world without having to feel too happy. Right? Come on now. Look at everywhere you look around you. I, I can't stand to listen to uh, look at television in the news. The minute, the first minute I turn it off and then get on to the other stuff. Hmm? I, I won't listen to it because I get angry. Because I swallow the junk I'm hearing on that TV. And when you swallow it, you'll get angry because I'm getting their thoughts, I'm accepting their thoughts. Hmm? You understand what I'm saying? We don't realize how we're doing it. We're accepting their thoughts, accepting their thinking, and said, how crazier can you be? And then I realized, what am I doing to myself? I don't think like that. <laughs> you have to catch yourself up and stop thinking that way. And when my, my wife turned to me, and she said to me, when I, when, when I told her, I said, ah, I remember. My father told me that when I was a teenager. She says, and she laughed, and she said, yes, and who could be more mediocre than your father? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I laughed. I laughed. Because I, this is all the human, human way of looking at things. It's the wrong way of looking at the I am in you. You know, we have to be careful with this word, I am. Hmm? Yes. You know, this is why I liked, enjoyed Spanish and enjoy Aramaic, because they have certain ways of saying things that in English we trap ourselves. Hmm? For instance, in, in Spanish and in Italian, it's the same way. You say, we don't say, I am hungry. You know, I am hungry. No, they say, tengo hambre. I have hunger. I have hunger. And when you're sick, you never say, I am sick. They say, estoy enfermo. Estoy is a temporary verb to be. means I'm temporarily feeling sick. When they say the I am, it's soy, which is another word. And people don't like it, and Italians the same way. We have two verbs to be. One is temporary and one is permanent. But in English, we have just one way, permanent. And that's what makes the difference when you say I am. And when, watch how you use the word I am. I am angry. That means I'm identifying my being with anger. Hmm? And or when we, this is the reason why we fight. Hmm? Pub, in, 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 politically. In my class, I said the other night, I said, I said, you know what the trouble with Congress is? It's lost homeostasis. That's a medical term. <laughs> it's lost homeostasis. And you know what that means? The equilibrium, the balance. When one side becomes greater than the other side, you've lost homeostasis. It's not whether the thing is right or wrong, it's you've lost that balance. And once you've lost the balance, and the whole being is balanced, thinking can throw you off balance. That's what happens to you. Actually, your body is fighting to be well all the time. It only knows one thing, health, health, health. But we keep giving it thoughts, thoughts, thoughts that keep throwing it the equilibrium off and it gets heavy on one side and we get an, an, an imbalance. See? The cells know what you're thinking and will follow it through. Come on now, stop and think about life itself. When you think about how tremendous the human cell is, or cell, period, how in the world did the cell know how to divide itself? Come on, how did it know that? What's inside that cell? Come on now, what's inside that cell? How did that cell know to divide itself? Hmm? And then, I'm talking about human creation. And then all of a sudden that cell becomes an arm. And then all of a sudden it gets legs. Then all of a sudden it gets a nose and eyes. I mean, these little cells are characters. <laughs> Come on now, just it's living. It's living. There's an intelligence in the cells, and that intelligence we call God. We call God that intelligence, and God is that loving intelligence that's in every cell in your body, and your body only wants to know one thing, and that is balance and equilibrium. That's all it wants to know. But because of our thinking and the way we treat ourselves and what we're exposed to and all these things, it pushes it the other direction, but your body's fighting for you all the time. In other words, there's a God cell. <laughs> there's a God cell in you wanting to burst forth, you know. You know, most of the healings I've ever had, believe it or not, has been in hospitals. I'm talking about spiritual healings, has been in hospitals, not from treatments, 
I'm talking about as a minister, as a pastor. You know, when I did pastoring in San Antonio, I was always going to the hospital when people were put there all the time. And I'll never forget, uh, there was this one woman, she was married to a famous uh, painter, famous, you know, artist, famous. His name was Proctor. And uh, his stuff is hanging in museums all over the United States. She was a member of my congregation, so was he. But she became ill. Catherine was her name, his wife, Catherine. And they couldn't find, she had some sort of a growth in the area, in the stomach. And I went to the hospital. This was in Laguna Beach, California. I went to the hospital there in Laguna Beach, and the daughter opposed me right away because she didn't like her mother going to church there, didn't want to, just, she was against everything. I still went in anyway. I said, I'm her pastor and I can go in there. And the doctors were getting ready to operate on her, to open her up because they couldn't figure out what in the world, she couldn't eat, she couldn't do anything, she was beginning to waste away because of this obstruction here. They didn't know what it was. And they were getting ready to operate. They saw something there and they were getting ready to, to take it out. And I, I don't know, sometimes I say the darndest things, I don't know where it comes from. And I told, I said, Catherine, don't let them operate on you. And she looked at me. She says, they shouldn't operate on me? I said, no. She said, then you're going to pray for me right now? I said, yes. <laughs> And she says, okay. And the daughter was there. She got very angry and went in with the doctors and, you know, don't, don't you do that. Don't, don't you dare. And so I said, okay, Catherine. And she was wearing not just the one piece, but just a two piece thing, you know, where they tie it here. And she says, it hurts all in here, in the duodenal and in the stomach and intestinal area. And, she, and I said, well, I don't have to put my hand on it. Uh, she said, yeah, but I want it. She just untied it here. And she said, even if you just wave your hand over it. I said, I'll be glad to do it. And I prayed. <clears throat> and I just waved my hand over it. And she went to sleep. I waved my hand over it. Just for about a minute or two, she dozed off. And I said, looked at her, and I thought, what's going on? And all of a sudden, she opened her eyes like that, really wide, and she said, I'm healed. I said, what? She says, I'm healed. And she, I said, well, good. She said, yes, all pain, everything's gone. She said, when you put your hand over my stomach like that and waved it, she says, it was like a soft feeling came over all of my whole body, my whole body. Don't you see what happened? Is the cells in my hand were responding to the cells in her body. Absolutely. The cells in my hand were responding to the cells in her body. And she was so open and receptive, she, she got it. And as I was doing that, she got it. She woke up. She said, ah. And she said, I just drifted off, then came back, and pain's gone. Everything's gone. And, and the daughter came running in. She said she, she didn't like it. She said, you hush up. You tell the doctors come in here and examine me. Well, they took x-rays again. There was no lump there. Nothing was there. Everything was gone. Totally, completely gone. Mm -hmm. And she was so excited. She says, I know I'm here. She got up off that bed and she dropped the drawers <laughs> because she forgot that she untied it. So, so in church, the next Sunday, when she was there, she told everyone, I dropped my, my drawers for my minister in the hospital. <laughs> and I said, Catherine, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> she told about her healing and how it was done. Mm -hmm. Anytime she wanted... Got sick, she always called me from then on, from that time on, see. 
And she said, I know it's going to work. And I've had and another hospital one, which I've told you about, was the meningitis and encephalitis, 18 years old. John Dean was his name. And it was miraculous in the hospital. You see, the cells do not pay attention to where you are, what situation you're in. It doesn't. If you change your thought and hook up with God that you've always been hooked up with, God is always there ready to burst forth in you right now, even this morning. That's why I love when Tim comes on and he gets that singing. He makes sure that God is bursting out of you before we begin the service. And I love it. I love it. And that's what you have now. Realize the treasure and the I am that you are. Quit identifying with the I am's that the world wants to hear you say, I am Republican. I am Democrat. No, no, we need Republicans and Democrats to be balanced and get back to homeostasis. But when one side is bigger than the other, you're not going to have homeostasis. You're going to have an imbalance and you're going to have sickness. That's what's wrong with the government today. It's sick. It's sick. Why? Because no equilibrium, no homeostasis. Right. I'm not saying who's right and who's wrong and which has the correct doctrine, which hasn't the correct doctrine. I'm not talking in that area. I'm talking about balance that we as human beings have got to, as spiritual beings really, have got to come from that place, governmentally, religiously, business-wise. It's got to come from within ourselves, the real I am, and not titles and things we've given ourselves. You know, just like we love to classify people. We love to classify them sexually which is stupid. It's stupid. You cannot say, I am this and I am that. You're not that. The only is, I love what God said. You just say, I am is sending you, when he said to Moses. You know, who, who shall I, what, what, you know, what God are you? You don't realize it, but there were many gods in those days. Many gods. And so, he had to identify. And when he actually gave him, when he asked for his name, he didn't really give a name. He gave a verb. He didn't give a noun. He gave a verb. You know, just, just like we say, I am Rocco. I got news for you. I'm not Rocco. That's just a classification so you can separate me from someone else. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a classification. The real you is not the name you are carrying. Hmm? So if you don't like your name, don't worry about it. Not like our world today. If you want to, you can change it too. So you're going to change it to another name. What difference does that make? Hmm? If the I am in you is transcendent, you don't have to worry about transcending because the I am is transcendent. It is above everything we have named everything we have classified, everything we have identified, it is beyond and above that. And your cells in your body know it. Know it. But when you give it feed at the other stuff, you get dragged down, dragged down. You know, you know I am. You know, and then some people get so blown up with the I, I am so and so. Don't you know me? I am so-and-so. <laughs> well, it seems to me that your I am and my I am are the same. Hmm? It's the same. But it uniquely expresses itself in different ways. Oh, I love Dr. Barbara on the first Sunday that opened this month. I just loved it. I had to call her up and tell her. I said, Barbara, the bases were loaded and you hit a home run. <laughs> I said, right out of the park it went. Didn't I tell you that? I had to tell her that because why? It was the expression of God in her that is unique. And everyone that gets up here is there is an explosion of God. See, it's more than just the words. 
It's more than just the words. It's how does your body feel when they are talking? How does your mind feel when they are talking? Is it corralling it? Is it bringing it into the real truth of who and what you are? And nah, <laughs> it is beyond anything that we can say with words.